Well, charter schools are a valuable part of Jefferson County's portfolio of options for our parents. They bring all kinds of choices uh, that uh, weren't available when I went to the Jefferson County schools. I think we're up to 16, maybe 17 charters now. And to me, every student should be considered equally valuable the, regardless of which public school they choose to go to. So that's why I felt it very important to make sure that each child was equitably funded throughout the district. Yeah. Well, I think charters give greater choice. They have a little bit different programming and flexibility to be able to do things outside the box. I really love that Mr. McMinnemy has put forward uh, a philosophy of a one-size-fits-one instead of a one-size-fits-all. But it takes a while to really get that implemented, and I think student-based budgeting is going to be able to help with that across the district. Um, charter schools were able to have a little bit more of a special focus, and now I believe with student-based budgeting, we'll be able to have some of that special focus in all of our schools. We've committed ourselves to ensuring that every parent finds a good fit for their students in public education in Jeffco. And that means we have to have good choices. We have to have great neighborhood schools. We, we need good charter schools with different structures and different curriculum formats, like uh, uh, core knowledge schools and, and Montessori schools and, and schools that our parents really want to be able to find. These are all public schools. You know, the principal issue around funding is it has got to be fair for every student who attends a public school in Jeffco. It wasn't fair in Jeffco. So when we ran, we discussed that that had to be righted, and we made certain that we did address that. Denver has roughly the same, same student count and three times as many charters as Jefferson County does. So we're certainly in no danger of having too many charters. Uh, we don't have a goal for how many charters we're going to have in Jeffco. What we want are good schools. Well, just look at Denver next door. They've got about 40 uh, compared to our 17 or so. Um, so I think we could, you know, realistically double the number of charters. Well, charters are, of course, subject to uh, the rules and regulations of the state, and they do have their own governing boards, and they are accountable to the district. So, uh, it's in their own best interest to get the best teachers. Uh, I think they just wouldn't succeed if, uh, if they didn't. Well, they were accountable before, and um they will still be accountable. They have to itemize all of their expenditures, where in the past our neighborhood schools didn't have to do that. It was just that pool of money um, that was sourced out to the different schools in our neighborhood schools. So now with student-based budgeting, all of our schools are going to be more accountable on where their money is going and how much money they receive. Um, but as far as academics, if they're not meeting the grade, then they do have to answer to the board. Charter schools are very accountable, just like all Jeffco public schools are. We meet and, and discuss the, the status of all of our schools. We look at academic performance and student results. Uh, we look at financial responsibility. Those are, those are the aspects of governance that we apply to all public schools in Jefferson County. So that is not something that should be viewed as a difficulty in charter schools. That's an opportunity for them to have some flexibility, to bring new ideas and new approaches to the table, and to ensure that we really are thinking about education carefully and thoroughly and creating opportunities to improve education. Well, I think that uh, you know the uh, the teacher uh, the uh, the rates of attrition in our district is 10 to 20 percent below the state average. I think it's pretty good for the uh, fact that we are the largest K-12 in the state. Uh, so I don't really believe there's uh, there's a net increase or an, an exodus. And I, frankly, if I were a teacher. Um, and I keep hearing people saying that all the good teachers are leaving Jeffco. Well, that kind of implies that we're only being left with the ones that aren't good, and I'd be insulted if I were a teacher. I don't believe that's happening. To retain teachers, you have to attract, retain, and reward. And we've taken steps to do that already by attracting them, uh, by raising the base salary from what was really pretty unacceptable, from 33.6 to uh, 38,000, so that's part one. 
to attract, to retain. I think we have to have a robust system that rewards these teachers for their great performance and not uh, simply just rewarding for uh, you know, giving an automatic raise for simply being there. I think we have an exodus of teachers just across the nation. Teachers are no longer able to really focus on the student and be an actual teacher when they spend 30 percent of their school year prepping or giving a test. And that has to be frustrating because I know most teachers didn't go into the field because of money. Of course not. They went in there because they have a deep love for our students and they want to help them be everything they can be and to improve our nation. And our teachers deserve better. They shouldn't be professional test givers. We're, we've come off of a period of financial challenge uh, in the, in the uh, economy over the past few years. As times improve, so does mobility uh, across every industry right now. People are changing jobs more than they were when times were tight. But, and let's face it, in Jefferson County, there have been a lot of very significant, meaningful changes in education over the last year and a half. We've improved teacher compensation, but we've also made certain that we do the right thing for our students, which is to ensure that compensation is tied to performance. Those changes come with some challenges. Change is hard, and of course I expect that there will be some increase in turnover during a period of change, but it's not a large increase in turnover in Jefferson County. In fact, it's a fairly modest one and continues to be below the state average. No, I don't think I would. I mean, these, uh, these evaluations were jointly agreed upon by both the district and the Teachers Association. So I think they're fair. I think they could always be improved, and we're always working to improve these things. But at some point, you do have to make a change. No, because it had to be implemented sometime, and I think no matter when it would be implemented, we would still have the pushback. So just because the pay is linked to your performance. Are you going to work harder? I mean, shouldn't you have been working hard all along? Why should that really have made a big difference in there? It's important for any group of people that want to be a professional, that they understand and fundamentally recognize that performance matters. So I, I don't spend a lot of time worrying that over the argument that I didn't know my performance would matter because it always matters. We have students in classrooms. I really have a hard time understanding why there is such a pushback on this. In any other field, if you're not effective, you don't get the raise and you're lucky to keep your job. Well, I think the biggest point of contention on that contract was its duration. And I understand that one academic year may not be what they wanted, but my position is this is the first time in four decades that we have had a complete and total rewrite of the association contract. But it is kind of new ground, it's new territory. I think one academic year is both reasonable and prudent. After the modifications, we see what works, what doesn't work. And then in June, or actually before, uh, before it expires on June 30th, I'd be glad to talk about a longer term. Well, I think we've established a, an excellent agreement that is significantly better aligned with the interests of our students. Uh, so I want to see us honor that agreement. I want to see us in the future work, continue to work together collaboratively on these agreements and, uh, and to make certain that we're operating in the spirit of what we've established. For me, a one school year term on the contract that we just negotiated was very important because it is a completely new contract. When, when you're asking for COPs, it's more like you're asking for forgiveness. <laughs> you, you take the money and then in the future date you hope that uh, they will be funded by a bond issue. 
To ask for bonds, on the other hand, is that we're asking for the, uh, the permission of the voters. I have no problem whatsoever going out to the public, to the voter, and making a case and asking for the money for the increased uh, needs that we have for facilities and, and other stuff. So I've been very clear that I am not in favor of using a COP. I believe that that is um, going around the public and not asking for their approval. Our finances in the district are tightening and it, I don't believe that that is a wise way to um, to spend our taxpayer money. I, I am very comfortable with us bringing forward a bond or however we want to present it to come to the vote of the people. If they want those schools to be built with their money, then hey, let's do it. If they're not in favor of it, then we need to look at other ways. State law intends that capital questions be taken to the voters. The right thing to do is to take a bond issue to the voters if we want significant funds to, kill, to continue a build-out program, which I think we have to uh, take that question to the voters. We voted 5-0 to discuss a bond for 2016. Well, uh, I think there are strategic, I'm not really sure how bonds work, but I think there are strategic years when you need to ask for these, and sometimes it's better in an election year, uh, and uh, I don't know if this would be in the optimum time, but now we can make a really good case in 2016 that, uh, that this county really does need uh, to build some new schools. This year we're able to build a school without incurring public debt, and next year we will consider if we need to go for a bond package. Uh, we're going to consider it this year if we need to go for a bond package next year to continue the build out as needed. It came as no surprise because the day after we were elected, the former superintendent gave her resignation stating she didn't want to work with a conservative board. So it started from that day forward. We were barely given the opportunity to even talk, and it's still that way to a certain extent in our meetings. Um, to be able to openly uh, give a viewpoint or ask a question and then you're viciously attacked at the board table um, makes it hard for everybody. So I don't think we were given a fair chance, and reform is hard. We've made some really big changes in the district. Well, I was disappointed because I think it's, uh, it's a distraction to the people. It's a distraction now instead of spending more time doing what I can do to help the district. Now I've got to go campaign again and tell people why I think that uh, this, uh, this recall effort is, is really an unfortunate waste of taxpayer money. Now we're talking about a possibility of $500,000 that this district will have to pay for a recall election that's politically motivated untimely and in my opinion unnecessary, that's enough to get me to lose my temper. I think every parent should be livid if that goes through. You know, I welcome the dialogue. The, the, we have accomplished so much in Jefferson County in the last year and a half, but, but we need to have community input. We need to have an opportunity to talk about the great things that have been accomplished.